everybody, welcome to Public Nuisance Podcast. I'm here with Jess Leedy from Ska Daddies. They're going to play my birthday, August 17th. Thanks for coming in, brother. Jess Leedy from the Ska Daddies. The one and only Ska Daddies. Y'all, I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm not a drunk ha- hangover, but it's a surf hangover. A surf hangover, well, yeah. And what is a surf hangover? It's when I surfed from 8 o'clock in the morning till 1.30 in the afternoon straight in six to eight foot barrels by myself with nobody out. Where at? Point Magoo Air Base. No shit. I have a contractor's like I'm a contractor, by the way. Leedy Construction. <laughs> it's not a plug. Um, but I got a contractor's badge for the base, to, and it took a year. There's a lot of people to think. Too many, so I'm not gonna thank anybody. <laughs> and uh, and I ended up getting my photographer a badge too, and made him an engineer, which he's not, <laughs> which is funny. But he's in, he's an engineer with his camera. So, long story short, I wasn't gonna be able to make it, but I'm here with the sa- surf hangover. Hell yeah, hell yeah. And uh, Scott Daddies. I have some serious history. It goes back to 1992. Um, there was a band in 1991 called the Irieites, which was Dustin and Zorba and Tommy and Bill White, drummer. And they played numerous parties and, and then got a residency at the Elephant Bar, which is now Osabi's. Yeah. And they played there, and I actually happened to be a a waiter there at the time. And I was in a band called JBC, which was an R&B hip-hop band, who got signed with Kiss'em Records, which was a record company that did the Do Wah Diddy uh, song. Do Wah Diddy, can you see if damn I could see if I want you a damn so yeah, you get that gift, and then uh, so ended up the record company was a bunch of gangsters, and they were funding their record label through cocaine and got busted. So I was sitting here with a full re- length record, artwork and everything ready to get released. Yeah, and I got the phone call that it was all distinguished. So I went to Puerto Escondido, Oaxaca to go surfing. When I got back, Scott Eddies were formed because Iriites broke up. Yeah. JBC was no longer. Me, Zorba, Dustin, Paul Shin, and this guy named Phil Pollock, drummer, got together on the corner of uh, Pedersen and uh, Wooly, which was a house that Paul Shin, the bass player, lived in, and we used to practice. And we started doing songs, and then Billy Davis came in with his genius keyboarding, Dude, and we started incredible. making music, and then all of a sudden we were a new band, you know? And, then, and that was in 1992, 93. And... Uh, Fast forward till now, so much has happened, and uh, but so with Scott Daddy's man, you guys made it made it pretty big, dude. Like known across the, the whole country and uh, everywhere. No doubt opened up for us. Uh, we opened up for the specials, Fishbone, um, plenty of you know second and third wave ska bands have you know been influenced by our music. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, it's been pretty fun, you know. It's been a fun ride, and then it's been a kind of a crazy ride too, you know, with dealing with so many powerful people in the band, you know, so many uh, gracious and beautiful and uh, powerful musicians, yeah, you know. And it's up. like yeah. sometimes you're gonna butt heads, and sometimes you're gonna, you know. You're just gonna hug each other like you can't get enough of each other, you know. And and the music that you're gonna make and and the beautiful music that comes about 
and then you know the the power struggles and the uh, egos and egos everything. and all yeah. that all comes into play because you got the the surf side of our band, which I'm a surfer. Everybody in the band surfed, um, and then we grew up on a beach called Silver Strand, which was a heavy localism style atmosphere especially like, back in that know, day <laughs> hey if you don't live here get the hell out you yeah. know it's the, that's the way it was and and when people said you know f you then it was like straight up you know what are you gonna do you know you're gonna punch somebody in the face or you're gonna go oh, eh. no yeah. we punched them in the face you know yeah. and then, and it was you know yeah we called it the sandbox yeah and i mean so i was back east i, I, I left in, in 90 to go back east and i you know so i've been gone out of the scene for a long time but when i came back you know started doing the music here which really you know zorba and you and you know you guys were the first ones that like come in and, and really start the the music scene back up here and so i was getting really into the, in the, the, the music in the 805 and you know with the, with the loss of dustin i know we had uh his memorial here and man that was that was crazy to see how much love and how much respect and yeah, you know there's awesome. people from everywhere were here and this is crazy that was crazy losing somebody like that a friend that we all grew up with and wrote music with and started a band with it's like there's no words yeah. you know what i mean and then you know Darren Cruz you know Zorba you know he helped you so much with getting this place off the ground with music yeah. and everything and and kudos to him. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, 100%. Like he's done he's so been, much. He's, so big, he's, he's such a go-getter as far as like pushing the envelope of like making things happen. And I love that about him. You know what I mean? And, and you know, he started the Free Love Project during the whole COVID thing, you know? And, yeah, because that's when and, I started doing the music. Because they you know during exactly. COVID, I started doing it because everybody shut down and... He comes to me and says, dude, I got bands and I got all these collaborations and everything going on. I was yeah. like, you're the only person saying that during COVID that will come out and play. And you know? he and so, fucking, he's such a go-getter. Yeah. He's always, he's like the ultimate uh, self-promoter. Yeah. You know what I mean? He, he's like, he's his own entity. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, I'm privileged to be in a band with the guy. You know, we have our trips, we butt heads, but it's because it's greatness happening. Right. You know right. what I mean? And yeah. I love the guy like he's my brother. I grew up with his uh, other brother, Blake, who's on tour right now in Europe and Japan. And, and he's killing it with Stalag, yeah. you know, and it's like, and then Brandon, you know, Brandon's like, you know, when he was a kid, he was like the, the courtship of Eddie's father and. Stu Cruz, you know, the legend from the, the Rudder Room. And and then now you have Zorba's yeah. son who comes and plays here. And all and of their all, nephews all and are nieces coming through. and yeah. Mandy Cruz and everybody. It's like, you know, such a legendary family, you know. And then I'm so blessed to be a part of their family too, you know. Like I grew up with them. And, you know, I've always been a, a only child. So me and Blake were always like connected because he felt like he was separated from everybody yeah. when he was little, for some reason. Yeah. But he was he always had his own path, you know what I mean? Yeah. And now that the Scott Eddies are back together, and like doing it, and we have like the full horn section, and we've had so many people die in our band, you know what I mean? It's <laughs> like, you know, I played in. Aggression, you know, and like everybody in Gresham died, you know. Yeah. It's like, well, aggression's dead, you know, because everybody in Gresham was dead. Yeah. You know? And you know, that was a pri privilege for me to even be a part of that, you know what I mean? In the Narcore scene. Doing the Narcore All Stars with Blake and Larry uh White and uh, you know, Dave Casillas. Yeah. A legendary guitar player in the hardcore scene, you know, he was the yeah. original guitar player for a uh, Stalag and he played with no effects and Yeah, I've been I've been, I've been honored to uh, you know, to be able to support the the whole hardcore, you know, yeah, that's you know, what's we cool about punk and what you, you got know, going on here, buddy, you know. I just wanted to let you know how much uh I appreciate you. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, through the COVID times, keeping music alive. And that's been such an awesome thing because 
people, you know, people need music, man. People one day really nobody's like, here. Next day there's you can't even get in. You know, and yeah. it's that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Because because people are lame. Yeah. And one minute they're all on board, and the next minute they're like haters. Yeah. You know, yeah. And who cares? Yeah. I don't care. We're here to do music, regardless if you show up or not. Yeah. And it's fun because there was like there was a gig where Doctor No played, and there was. Only 20, 30 people here. Yeah. But I, I was like, I was sweating and and just having the time of my life. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then the next day, you know, they're playing somewhere in Anaheim and they got, you know, 1,500 people there, you know, and yeah. slam pit, yeah. you know, yeah. only, you know, it's like, and that's what's cool about hardcore and, and, yeah. and, and just music in general because it just transcends from area to area and from fan to fan and from genre to genre and also friendships to friendships because I would not have the friendships I have without Nardcore yeah. or without the music that I've grown up learning and, and just being a, a student. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and you know, I play in another band called the Heavy Hitters, you know, and and it's just a bunch of all star guys, you yeah. know, that are just leaders in their own band. Yeah. And I'm like privileged to even be a part of it. Yeah, that. Maury's a legend too, man. Yeah, Maury's a legend, legend, legend you know, you know, and he's like and he's so focused on family. Yeah. Music second, which it's all that way with all of us, but like, you know, when it comes to, like, well, you know, this is going on with my fam. I can't make the show. It's like, we all understand. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's so cool about yeah. how he, pro you know, he projects what the standard is. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And, and, and same with Zorba. You know, Zorba, Darren Cruz, my brother. I mean, just last night, me and him got into it and, you know, and stopped practice early because we got into it and everybody like, whoa, and they, you know, but today we made up, everything's cool, we're going to be doing our shows, we're going to play here on uh, August oh, 17th. For my birthday, thank for you, man. For your birthday, brother. <laughs> right, thank you, man. And thank you. I'm excited. I had, I didn't know that it would, was booked. Sorry. That's all right. Sorry about that. But I think that might be Zorba. Actually. Probably Zorba. He wants his phone in. Hopefully it is. Nope, it's my gal. Let me just chime in with my gal real quick. Sorry. Babe, I'm at Mrs. Olson's doing an interview. You're on live. You're on live. Say hi. You're on live right now. So I love you. I got to go. Okay. <laughs> Bye. So, my wife, I can't give enough to her. I mean, you know what family's all about. All about. And, yeah, that's uh, what I do. Is. You know, I have five kids, which nobody really knows. Some, you know, I have uh, three do, do, daughters. Do, do, do you know all the all, all the all the kids? No, I'm just fucking with you. I, <laughs> come it, on, might be, man. it might be ten. We don't know. When they say, <laughs> "Dad, I need money," you know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know I know my kids yeah. when they need money, right? Yep. Yeah, so it's the older they get. They're, they're, the older they get, they're called Dad. Dad. So Mom Bye. said that you were going to take me shopping this weekend for clothes. So, yeah, you know they, they never call to say hi. So it's like, yeah, you got a couple dollars, you know? No, my wife calls to say hi. The wife, but not the kids. <laughs> the kids are no, my gender. kids do, too. Yeah. That's that's one thing I have to say. My, my family... I mean, me personally, growing up as the only child, I'm a brat, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, dude, man, so, dude, so, you know, you're here, man. I just wanted to, to say thank you, dude, for all the all the shit that you have brought here to, you know, to to Miss Olson's for me personally. You know what I mean? Like, you know, the the respect and, and love that that I've gotten from the music community really started with with you guys. You know what I'm saying? Because you guys came in and. You know, the time I didn't know who was who in the, in the whole a in the industry and, and around here. And, you know, you guys were, you know, like on top level. You know what I mean? Like, you know, everybody's like, 
you know, that whole Scott Daddy generation, that whole group, man, they're kind of, they're the godfathers of the music scene around here now. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's, it, you know, and I started realizing that. And, Thank you. You know, it's, it, it, it takes a lifetime of work to get to that point. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, people don't understand all the rehearsals, um, you know, writing and changing lyrics and, uh, and just the performing, dude. And like, just, but you, but and you, then the humping you, of the equipment and. Doing but you guys all on stage, things. dude, it's like, but it's it's so fucking fun to watch. You know what I'm saying? You guys yeah. got the horns. You guys, everybody just jamming. You know, and, and just watch, and then Billy himself, dude. You know what I mean? That guy's a one man show by himself. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah. It's, yeah, like, like, it's, it's crazy, yeah. man. So we're all playing uh, on the 11th too to promote. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, yeah. Where where are you guys at? We're at the J Dock here in the harbor. What time? Uh, two to five on Sunday, August 11th. Perfect. Perfect. J Doc here. I'll be there. I'll come down and then check we'll it out. be here August 17th with ID Klein and Stronger the Machine. Stronger the Machine. Yeah, yeah they're badass too, man. So I haven't seen them, but they're I'm fantastic. To yeah, them. they're they're a new group out of Ventura, man. They're they're fantastic, dude. Fantastic. Well, hey Matt, I love you and everything you're doing and the Mrs. Olson's uh, history goes back deep with me with the Olsen family yep and you know Ole Olsen and Tom Olsen and Steve Olsen and the whole Olsen family great people man they're they're great people with them yeah, we, we had Corinne's memorial here, man, and the, the, all the Olsen family was here. It was really cool to yeah, have, that, have us all I mean, together. That, man. Was, that was great, yeah. and I was so glad to be here for that. And uh, you know, I can't praise you enough for everything that you do for our community. Thank you, man. So thank, thank you. you everything. Appreciate you, brother. Wait a minute, Gase. Appreciate you, bro. Hey, Scott, man, for my birthday party on the 17th. Come check him out, man. Peace.